You are listening to the Forcecom Frontline, bringing you to our soldiers on the front lines of readiness. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Forcecom Frontline. I'm Jeannie, and I'm your host. Today, in support of Suicide Prevention Month, I am joined by the JBLM Suicide Prevention Team, which includes Jackie Salazar, the ASAP Program Manager, Jonathan Krauss, the ASAP Prevention Coordinator Manager, and Jacqueline Young, the Suicide Prevention Program Coordinator. This team was recently announced by the Defense Suicide Prevention Office as the Army installation to be recognized for their outstanding contributions to the community at the Pentagon. Welcome team, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, So first of all, just tell me a little bit about yourselves. Um, Whoever wants to go first, just tell me um, who you are, where you're from, what you do, and kind of how you got into your job. Um, I'll go first. So, name is Jackie Salazar. I'm the ASAP program manager. I've been with ASAP going on 15 years. I started off as the administrative support assistant when we had the confidential alcohol treatment education program and moved from there to drug testing to ASAP to an administrative officer per se, um, and then the ASAP specialist, and then to the position I'm in now. So, I've been an Army brat my whole life and joined as a GS-1 at the Fort Lewis Commissary, and I have been at Fort Lewis ever since. Um, so, yes, there was a time when there was GS-1s. I don't think they exist anymore, but I've been around I, for a long time. I think they start out as a GS-4, and actually, Jackie and I go way back, um, guys. Uh, Jackie did workforce development stuff uh, a few years ago and did my new employee in processing when I joined GBLM back in 2019. So I've known Jackie for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm was, glad to I see was... you are where you are now. I, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Jacqueline, you want to go next? Yeah, of course. So um, I'm an Army veteran. So uh, I was a behavioral health technician in the Army, did my time. And then upon transitioning to civilian world, I became an ASAP specialist. And then um, I am currently the Suicide Prevention Program Coordinator. So continue being with the ASAP team um, here at JBLM. Since it was my last duty station, I love this place so much. So I made it my permanent home pretty much. There is a lot I miss about JBL. I'm, I'm not going to lie. But I don't miss the rain and I don't miss the traffic. <laughs> mm, yeah. Jonathan? Uh, yeah, so I guess that leaves me. Uh, so my name is Jonathan. I am the Army Substance Abuse Program Prevention Coordinator Manager. So it's a real mouthful of a title. Uh, everybody else gets real nice short titles. Mine's really long for some odd reason. Um, I have been with ASAP since February of 2022. Before working for ASAP, I worked at a uh, nonprofit mental health agency in Denton, Texas, called Denton County MHMR. A uh, really wonderful organization. So working there, I got to work with folks various age ranges, uh, experiencing suicidal ideations, homicidal ideations, but also having some sort of substance use disorder. And I'm also prior military. I'm an army brat. And so I have a strong connection to the military. And I found this opening for the Army Substance Abuse Program, applied for it, and I've always mm-hmm. wanted to live in and around Joint Base Lewis McCord. I think it's really beautiful. I like the rain. I like it dark. I like it cold. Uh, so it's perfect for me. Uh, being a Texan all my life, I couldn't do another Texas summer. So I'm really happy to be where I'm at and serving the population that we serve. Absolutely amazing. Well, welcome all of you guys. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, I'm not going to call it an award because it's not an award. It's a recognition um, that you guys are receiving from the Defense Suicide Prevention Office. Um, can you tell me a little bit about it, how it came about? Like, how do you apply for it? Like, what goes into being recognized by the Army? Yeah, so first of all, it's a very humbling kind of experience being recognized. Uh, It was very unexpected. Um, Pretty much everything that we do is because we're very passionate about this, um, you know, saving lives and anything that we can do to help uh, the soldiers and families. Um, So the way that it came about, uh, pretty much we got like a last minute task for like, hey, kind of like just put together everything that you have done for suicide prevention in the past year. And so we did. Um, we are expecting much of it. So it was actually a, a big surprise for all of us. So I don't know if anybody wants to add something else. Yes, the team was in uh, Portland for the DOD VA, VA conference 
in July when they found out they won. I was here back at GBON, but the whole um, team, all my specialists was at Portland and they found out and they were all texting me like, did you know about this? I was like, no. <laughs> so it was nice for them to all be together um, and hear that they won. Um, when Jackie says it was a last minute tasker, we found out to submit the award. It was in December during block leave when everybody is on leave. Um, so she had to jump through hoops. I was on leave working with her um, just to try to get the award nomination put in so that we can have a packet ready because it had to be due before um, Christmas. And so we had like oh, wow. 72 hours or so to get all the signatures that we needed and to type up and provide pictures etc so but we were very passionate about what we have done so we wanted to submit our names into the hat so yeah everything awesome. kind of felt like sort of last minute the tasker last minute getting the award recognition last minute and it was really odd sitting in the audience when the panel was talking because the presenter just rattled off all the installations that were being recognized for suicide prevention and it just sounded so matter of fact and when joint base lewis mccord was recognized we all kind of just looked at each other and we're like what is going on right now we have zero idea <laughs> that this is even happening and it was very just it was, it was really weird it was really weird but it was it was really it was. Uh, great yeah for a second, we were like, wait, did they say <laughs> yeah. the base was the or did we heard this wrong? Was that us? It was very right. surprising, but it was good. And, and I can imagine having to jump through those hoops within like a couple of days to submit it in December and then you're just randomly somewhere. You said July, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. you're just sitting there and you probably already forgot about this because it yes. had been seven <laughs> yes. months ago. So, I mean, I'm super excited for you guys and that's amazing. Um, I can't even imagine like being in that kind of shock of like, <laughs> what just happened? But, you know, I'm sure you guys have done some amazing things or you wouldn't be recognized. So what have you done like what kind of things did you submit in your packet um that you know big army saw and was like yeah you guys are amazing here's some recognition <laughs> um it was fill the rock so we've done fill the rock the, this year currently which we're going to do this friday is our third iteration of it so we submitted um what we did the last two years um, and but every year we do fill the ruck, but we also do supplemental training. And I think that's where we get a lot of bang for our buck is the supplemental training. Throughout the year, we go to the units and we do icebreakers, we do conversation starters, we do communication exercises like the marshmallow challenge or dodgeball, things of that nature all okay. fall into a marshmallow <laughs> challenge what is yes. this yes. Um, yes it's not where soldiers like to get but we're going to give them a whole bunch of marshmallows and put it in their mouth and they have to talk with marshmallows in their mouth that's not the challenge but that's what they think <laughs> it is um it's building a tower out of spaghetti 18 spaghetti noodles um a yard of tape a yard of string and one one like jumbo marshmallow has to be on top and whoever has the tallest freestanding tower wins but we tie that into communication team building unit cohesion working to get a mission done even if you don't know everybody on your team but you have to get a task done um, so that's one of our popular activities we do that with the civilian workforce as well here at joint base lewis mccord with certain directorates um, so we really we really push the supplemental here at gblm and that's where our passion is but then fill the ruck is where we stress all of the unit cohesion, team building, communication, resources on and off the installation, um, and then getting the buy-in. And every year it's gotten bigger. Um, so first year was five, little over 500 service members. Then it was a little over 1,500 service members. And then we're tracking for this Friday, close to 3,000 service members come in this Friday. Wow. Um, so we're touching those, those people's lives. Um, even if they just remember one thing, they go through the eight stations this year, they'll be able to harp on something that they learned and take away. Um, even if it's just the shaved ice truck that's gonna be there, it's something they are like ASAP through an amazing event. They had the Kona ice truck there that played nice music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, maybe I need to fly out this weekend. Wait, you do? I have something you going on. Out. Have we something could going use, on. yeah, we could use more volunteers. Yes. Absolutely, <laughs> go ahead. Yes. Hey, I love coming back to JBLM. It's been about a year since I've been out there. So I I'm going to have to make a trip soon and then stop in and say hi to everybody at some point. Um, but no, I, I think that's amazing to fill the ruck. Um, and what what's entailed in kind of the stations? Like what kinds of things are they learning as they go around? 
Yeah, so um, they're kind of like coming as a squad. So between five to kind of 15, 20 people in each squad. So they're just going to do different stations and each station gets after something different to enhance that team. So it's um, communication, um, trust, resiliency, um, what is the, uh, the other one? Mindfulness. So there's different stations, connectedness. So each one of them has a different team uh, of what it's getting after. So it's to enhance that team so they can grow together. They kind of like, you know, it's all about creating that connection. And then at the end, they get also the resources to kind of like, we understand that um, there's a lot of risk factors out there. So what is out there to help me? So it's all about enhancing those protective factors that we're trying to get after here. And, and part also, of oh. Go, go ahead, Jonathan. Go I, ahead. Okay, thanks. So, and also throughout the ruck. So, the ruck this year, as Jackie mentioned, it's gotten bigger each year. So, it actually quite literally has gotten bigger each year. So, the first year we did at our local football stadium here at JBLM. Last year we had a ruck around American Lake. It was a little over uh, about a 5K. And this year it's 5.6 miles. And so, they're rucking together as a squad. And this year, what's different from the previous years is we have rocks that are between 35 to 50 pounds. So these teams are working together to carry that rock along that 5.6 miles to each activity. And so what we're hoping is that these soldiers know that they can ask for help, but also if they see their fellow battle buddies struggling, that they can offer to help carry that load, that they can help carry that rock with them. And so they're going to carry it from station to station. And the last station before we do a debrief with them over everything that they've learned, have a little bit of conversation about suicide prevention. The last station is we're calling it our resiliency rock painting. So when they get to that station, that rock is going to stay with them. We're not taking it. We'll take a photo of them with their rock, but that rock they're going to paint. What does suicide prevention look like to you? What does unit cohesion look like? What does resilience look like to you? And they all collaborate and everybody takes turns painting on the rock and then they take that rock back with them. Last year was the first year that we did that. And so over the past year, after we did last year's Fill the Ruck event, when you go out into units and you see their, these rocks were a little bit smaller <laughs> last year. Uh, so when you go out and you to their units and you see it in their gardens or you see it as a doorstop, as an entranceway into their battalion headquarters or whatever it is, it's really nice to see because then those soldiers go, oh, that's a reminder of the event that I did. And it's also a reminder of the team that I was with and the team that I'm a part of currently. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yes, we're really striving to, for them to with fill the ruck is to ask for help when that's we always say it's like a snowflake, right? When you have a risk pro or stress uh stress gosh. A stressor. <laughs> there you go, a stressor. Yep. <laughs> uh, you wanna you wanna get help ask for help when that snowflake is still a snowflake before it becomes a snowball and then before it becomes a boulder and then a, you know an avalanche we want people to learn to ask for help from the smallest stressor whether it's traffic on i-5 learning a new way to get out of i-5 to not hit i-5 or something more serious with families financial financial issues we just want folks to ask for help whether it's small or big or gigantic um, and ask for help from the very start and not when it's too late um, so that is our goal with Fill the Rock and all of our supplemental suicide trainings here. And we try to gear towards the adult learning model for everything that we do here at Joint Base Lewis McCord. So we stay away from PowerPoint for most part. Mm -hmm. And we like the engaging conversations, small groups. And if we have large groups, because sometimes units are saying, hey, we got 400 people. We need you to teach 400 people in a theater. OK, cool. We're going to break them up into smaller groups and I'll just have more staff go um, because PowerPoint doesn't to me, it does not get the information across to work it sticks with somebody so yeah. so yeah always the end goal is to kind of like creating uh you know building skills but also creating a safe space where they can be comfortable having those conversations and even when we're leave right that they still feel comfortable talking among each other and just kind of like helping each other and I think okay. that's really cool about all of our supplemental training is that we're kind of just in the room facilitating a conversation. So it's really great to be in those rooms, whether it's 20 soldiers, five soldiers, like Jackie said, 400 soldiers, and you kind of guide them along the path and just watch them have conversations with each other and learn new things and just realize that, oh, like my teammates, they're, they're humans too. Like they have their own problems in their everyday lives and just getting to know more about each other. So that's what I really think is big about our supplemental training. And That's then fantastic. we, yeah, and then we share as well. So, so that they can feel comfortable with us. We also share experiences so that we're not saying that we're better than anybody. We have problems and stressors as well. And we share what we did to 
overcome those. And we hope that leadership when we go to training does the same thing. And we get quite a bit of leaders, whether it's the commander, the first sergeant, or the platoon sergeants that actually speak up and say what they did for certain things, um, especially with the Army resources. So. Fantastic. It sounds like a, a lot of the programs are geared towards uh, military units. Um, what do you do for civilians or family members, if anything? Yeah, so we do offer the exact same uh, opportunities to the civilian and for the uh, spouses. We do uh, a lot of work with the SFRGs um, and okay. we are also embedded um, kind of like we do consistent training with each one of the civilian employees that join the installation. So every two weeks during the forge, we do some activities of active listening and then we also do some suicide prevention with them. So and the entire community is actually speaking the same language and receiving the same information information and kind of like um, pretty much, yeah, everybody can have the same opportunities. Okay. And uh, I know you guys talk about supplemental programs as far as um, I know years ago, I took a suicide intervention training. I think it was like a week long or is that something you guys still offer at GBLM or something similar to that for those who want to be more engrossed in the suicide prevention world? Yes, yeah, so I think what you're talking about was assist. We know we yes. some of the units have assist. We don't have assist. What we teach is ACSI, and Jacqueline can uh, talk about how we do ACSI here on the installation. Yeah, so okay. for ACSI, uh, there's different tiers. For tier two, to be that kind of uh, person that can go back and teach, um, we do offer that on a quarterly basis, and it is open um, to those E6s and above. But we also have the initiative of kind of like starting uh, employees that work at uh, Waller Hall, which is kind of like all the, um, they touch pretty much all soldiers who are in processing and out processing. In processing so and out process. have, yeah, so at yeah. least um, one employee in each section is also attending these classes so they can uh, have in, uh, those skills to how to know how to intervene. Kind of like, cause they're oftentimes are the ones that always see the soldiers when they're in this time that they're very uh, stressed, right? Um, during the transition period. So we're just being a little bit more intentional about also including our civilians in those trainings. Absolutely. Um, as a civilian here at Forcecom Public Affairs, I am part of our, I'm our suicide prevention uh, person and participate in our monthly suicide prevention working groups and, and things like that. So I know how important it is to to not only touch the soldiers, uh, but to also touch the civilians and the family members of um are uh, both soldiers and civilians. So I think it's great what you guys are doing out there at JBLM. Is there anything else you can tell me about the program? Because, you know, we talk about suicide pre prevention, but then I also have two Army Substance Abuse Program members in here. Like, how do the two programs work together? What is what is the purpose? Yeah, so um, suicide, really, I see it as a big umbrella. And you have everything that goes under there because there's not one stressor that can, you know, that makes it's a multiple of stressors on multiple periods going on and on. So substance abuse, relationship, finances, um, traffic, work you know, all those stressors are under that umbrella of suicide. So all the resources under there. And then I feel that the two programs here at Joint Base Los McCord, well, the Army Substance Abuse Program and Suicide Prevention Program go well together because we're in the units and we're in the, with the commands where we can let them know like, this resource is for family advocacy. So if they don't have a family advocacy person there, we can provide that information. We can provide information on any uh, resources on or off the installation. We may not be the SME, but we are giving all the resources that need to be given at that moment in time so that they have somebody that they can talk to and get where they need to go. Um, so, and a lot of times alcohol and substance or yeah, alcohol and substances do go with a lot of our suicidal ideations or deaths by suicides, whether it was during the moment or somewhere in the past. So it, there is a correlation there. Um, do you want to add anything? Yeah, no, I think that many people don't really know that the suicide prevention program is nested under the ASAP big umbrella, right? But it does make sense, like Jackie explained, um, because when you think about all these risk factors, right, um, the one that is kind of like prevalent in the majority of the suicides is substance abuse, um, majority um, alcohol, 
related. Um, so yeah, it just kind of like it, it just makes sense and just kind of having that kind of uh, visibility of both pro programs. Right, and the ASAP program with the CRT can show trends for installation, for brigade, for battalion and company, which helps us guide what we do here on the installation throughout the year with in regards to suicide prevention or substance abuse prevention, or if we need to reach out to our counter team, you know, FAP, uh, all the other prevention services and let them know, hey, this is what we're seeing. This is what the blotters are reporting, et cetera. So they, they go really go hand in hand to kind of give a bigger picture of what's happening. And then if we look at past trends, we can try to stay left of the bay, I like to say. And if we can get the buy-in from command teams, <laughs> we can help them stay left of the bank with prevention. Um, you just have to, prevention has to be prevention and not reactive. Um, so that's the battle I think we face. I think everybody in prevention field faces is to stay left of the bank and not being um, brought in because something happened and now we want to do prevention training. More proactive versus reactive. A culture yeah. change is what we need. Yeah, and I think it's great because here at our installation, we're unique in that we have uh, ASAP specialists where we all have our staff are all doing sorts of different duties. And a part of that is the suicide prevention program. So the ASAP specialist does risk reduction. They do prevention. They do suicide prevention. And I think that, you know, as a way we've been recognized for uh, having a really good suicide prevention program last year, it shows that our ASAP specialists are not just well-versed in substance abuse. They're also well-versed in risk reduction. They're also well-versed in suicide prevention. And I'm not saying that one way is better than the other, but I think that the recognition that we are receiving goes to show that we do really good work here and then our ASAP specialists specifically uh, just because they're the Army substance abuse program does not mean that they cannot do the suicide prevention program uh, with the assistance of Jacqueline Young providing us guidance on this is what's coming from the top down and we go out into the units or our staff goes out into the units and provides uh, guidance and provides instruction to the soldiers and to the civilians as well in this installation. Absolutely. You guys are a big, cohesive, happy family out there in the PMW. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I, I did mention that September is Suicide Prevention Month. Uh, what is JBLM doing this year to help spread the word about suicide prevention across the installation? Yeah, so we are doing our big event this fri uh, on Friday, the 6th of September. We're rock. doing that Feel the Rock. <laughs> yes, but we're also going to be doing a Bulls March. Um, that's going to be the Awareness Bulls March on what? on the 14th, 14th of September, so next Saturday. And that's in partnership with MWR. So we worked with MWR. They're providing the bibs, the water, the refreshments. And then we're providing medals. So and on the, each medal is a joint base medal. It's the logo, so uh, you're probably familiar with the logo. So. I am. <laughs> and on the back of the medal has um, the information, the phone number for 988, for the Family Advocacy Safe Line, the Military One Source, and then the Sharp Hotline, because those are a lot of our hot stressors here on Joint Base Lewis McCord. So on the medal, if somebody comes, they can turn it around and get all the numbers right away, and it's on a nice little lanyard, etc. cetera. Um, but we're also partnering with one of the Brigades here at Joint Base Lewis McCord, the multi-domain task force is putting on a event called Light Up the Night, which is next Wednesday, and it's where they're going to have guest speakers and unit reps there to light up like makeshift lanterns around Cohen Stadium, and they're going to just share stories and have people share, you know, their experiences with either losing somebody to suicide or their own experiences with um, suicidal ideation. So it's a moment for the community to come together at night, to share, hear stories, um, cry together, laugh together, just open up with resources. Um, and then Madigan has got some escape rooms and kickball. So we're doing lots of things throughout the, the whole month as a community to try to work together. So ASAP isn't in charge of all of the events, mm -hmm. um, but we have our hands in almost all the little cookie jars so that we can help promote all the wonderful events that the units or the other areas are putting on. Um, so, and we also like to say here, it's not hashtag, it's not just September. Um, so we do things throughout the year, but a lot of our recognition comes from September because of Suicide Prevention Month, but we're big on the hashtag, not just September. It should be an everyday process and it starts with you. Um, it's not somebody's job, it's everybody's job for suicide prevention, so. I agree, 100%. And, and on that note, what else does 
the suicide prevention office do outside of this September window? Like, I know we talked about the supplemental programs, but maybe like on a day to day basis, what do you guys offer? Um, You know, what are you there for? Things like that, you know, because we don't really think about the day to day that people do. We, We talk about the big events and, you know, the unit trainings and things like that. But in the the grand scheme of things, you guys are there you know, it's a, it's a full-time job. So, you know, what are you offering, you know, in your day-to-day basis? Yeah, so in a day-to-day basis, pretty much we're here to kind of like provide consultation for commanders to just get at, at each level, right? They should be kind of some sort of suicide prevention happening. So we're here to kind of make sure that they're doing it in the in a way that gets after what the intent is with the regulation. And also that is the, um, you know, um, it resonates with the soldiers, right? Because we don't want to get too stuck into like what the regulations say. We want to make sure that also resonates. Um, so we're here to do that. Um, we kind of like have all of our ACSI trained personnel throughout um, the installations. So we're here to support them as well as conducting training or any other activities um, that we might need to do. Um, and then pretty much to answer all kinds of questions. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> building relationships on a daily basis that with our good. internal and our external customers because it's really about the relationship you can develop with that person whether you just met them in the hallway or you've known that command team for months um, just the service members that walk up and down our hallways every day stopping and asking how can we help you how are you and actually stopping and listening um, and i think that goes a long way on building rapport because you stopped you listened you actually had a conversation um, and then doing the follow-ups making sure they got the help that they needed um, and i think the team here does that on a day in day out basis and we don't even realize that we could be saving a life just by acknowledging the person that's walking up and down our hallways um, and sometimes they're not even here for us. They're here for the JAG office, which is up on the third floor, or they're looking for some other office, but we've helped them um, just by acknowledging them and talking to them because really you never know if your smile or your talk to somebody can save somebody in that it might be in the moment, it might be an hour, it might be six months, an hour, a year, but just acknowledging somebody and letting them know that they are valued and needed um, goes a long way. Um, and just a simple hello and helping them. That's yeah. to me, that's the day in, day out for suicide prevention. And that's why I always say it starts with you. Um, yeah. And I think to your point, I think, yeah, that's very important. One of the things that it's not just about like, this is who I am and this is what my title is, but it's just about just being a human, right? Just creating those connections and it goes a long way. So when they do need you, they know who you are and where to come. So yeah, Absolutely. that is a big piece of it. Well, it it sounds amazing. It has been a pleasure talking with you all today. And I can tell how passionate all of you are about suicide prevention, Army substance abuse, and just the, the programs that are out there for soldiers, families, and civilians in general to support, you know, their everyday well be- well-being. You guys are a super passionate group, and I can completely understand why the Defense Suicide Prevention Office has recognized JBLM and their contributions to the community um, in regards to suicide prevention. So thank you so much for speaking with me today. I um greatly appreciate it and i i hope to our listeners that this has been very helpful information so um thank you thank Thank you you so much thank you um and, and if you or someone you know is in need of support help is available speak with someone today or call the suicide prevention line at 988 the 988 lifeline is a national network of local crisis centers that provides free and confidential emotional support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the United States. So until next time, we'll see you on the front line.